Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at this little ignition coil tester, which you can see on my bench. Now, this is for testing coils in the LS series of GM engines. So, this is a D585 coil used in the LS2 and LS7 engines. It's the round type, and they're usually found in trucks. Now, in the past, I made the ignition coil tester to test general purpose primary secondary type coils used in older cars using an HEI module, that's high energy ignition module from a HEI distributor to drive the coil to create spark and I used a 555 timer, a trigger board to drive the HEI module to create the spark. Now this coil tester has the same trigger board as my other coil tester that tested older coils. It has a 555 timer, it outputs 5 volt pulses and the dwell is fixed at 3.5 milliseconds so that's the pulse width of the output of the 555 timer. I have a potentiometer. I could adjust the frequency so I could simulate 600 RPM to 6000 RPM. Now this coil is smart. It has a igniter inside. It has an IGBT insulated gate bipolar transistor which has a high input impedance so it's voltage driven and the output is a bipolar transistor. It can handle higher currents. So the output of the 555 timer is driving the IGPT which is inside the coil. And you can see on the back, this is where the electronics is, and this is the heat sink for the IGBT, and this is the connector, which has the clip on the top, and you can get these online. So next we're going to power this uh, device up with 12 volts, so we need 12 volts here in input that can handle about 10 amps, so we have a battery or a power supply, and we'll power it up and we'll test out this coil. Okay, I got my spark gap hooked up to my coil and it's set for 14 millimeters, so we'll give that a try. Now we can measure the coil output, the high voltage output, by a spark length. And we can do that with one of these. This is a spark gap and it's adjustable. And one end is shaped like a spark plug, so it plugs into the boot of the cable. Another end we ground to the chassis and we adjust the distance, our spark distance, and I adjusted it to 14 millimeters for my test. So here's a formula. The voltage in kilovolts equals three times the spark length in millimeters. So that's one millimeter equals 3,000 volts. Now the LS coils are specced at 42 kilovolts, so that's 14 millimeters, and that's what I adjusted on my spark app, and it passed the test. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my coil tester. So basically it's my trigger board. So you can see the 555 timer chip and here's our coil. So this is the connector looking into the coil with the four terminals and the clip on the top. Now this is for an LS2 coil. Now LS1 coil the clip is on the bottom so everything is, is reversed. So make sure you check your pin out of your coil. Now the coil is powered by 12 volts from the battery. So here's our battery. So we've got 12 volts fed over to the very right terminal and the minus of the battery is fed into the very left terminal, that's our ground. So now our coil is powered. Our 555 timer is powered by 6 volts and it gets it from this regulator, a 7806. So we got 12 volts through this diode, so reverse protection, into the input of the regulator. The output of the regulator is 6 volts, which is fed into the 555 timer. Now the timer does, is not a rail-to-rail -rail device, so to get a, a strong 5 volt output we power it with 6 volts. So our output trigger will be 5 volts with 3.5 milliseconds in duration that's fed into the IGBT of the coil to trigger the coil. Now the 3.5 millisecond dwell time which is how long the primary coil is energized comes from this RC time constant here 8.2 K ohm resistor and a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. So current flows through the resistor through the diode charges up the capacitor and after a, a, a time period of 3.5 3.5 milliseconds, there'll be enough voltage to trigger the 555 timer on pins 2 and 6. Pin 7 will go low and discharge the capacitor through the pot. So the pot controls the frequency so we can simulate 600 to 6000 RPM and the resistor and capacitor is fixed uh, dwell time so if you want to change your dwell time, if you want to increase it, you could change this uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor to a higher value. Now most LS coils 
are set for a 3.5 millisecond dwell time. That's that's normal. But if you want to change it, you could change this capacitor. So the output of the 555 timer is fed into the IGBT of the coil, which is triggering it at 3.5 milliseconds in duration and 5 volts in height. So you could build this circuit on a Vero board and then connect it up to the coil. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to test a LS coil. If you look at my older video, you could see how you could test out the older coils. So now you know how to test both types of coils. And the trigger board is the same for both, so it makes the project very simple.